Hello and welcome to my channel. This is my graphite pencil portrait of Richard Armitage, the British actor, best known for his role of Thorin in The Hobbit. Let's have a look. I'm going to be using a graphite pencil this time and I haven't done many graphite pencil drawings lately. Recently I did a commissioned portrait in graphite pencil so I decided to do another one just to remind myself a little bit how it is to work with graphite pencils and if you want to know my opinion about the graphite pencil as a drawing tool I made a video on the advantages and disadvantages of graphite pencils if I remember I'm gonna put the link in the description and in the end screen I'm going to say a few words about the tools. Uh, the reference photo also hopefully will be in the in the description. I'm going to be using these Kohinoor uh, graphite pencils. Several different grades, mostly from HB to 8B, I guess. And uh, the size of the paper is 9 times 12 inches. It's 100 GSM. Uh, 190 GSM smooth drawing paper. Uh, so I thought this uh, photo, uh, this reference that I'm using was a really good one for a graphite pencil portrait. It has uh, it has some nice contrast. I thought that it would be fun and there are some things that I don't like about graphite pencils and one of those is the fact that they are reflective and that this is a problem with the darker areas but I'm going to have to use a lot of this 8B graphite pencil anyway so I'm going to have to find a way to deal with that now the lighting in my in my room is not perfect so Sometimes some parts of the drawing will be a little bit reflective and I hope that it won't be too distracting. One of the ways to deal with the, with the graphite shine um, other than getting used to it naturally is using a spray fixative because the fixative reduces reduces that graphite shine quite a bit. I use two coats normally and it helps a little bit. Anyway, let me uh, get on to the drawing process and say a few words about what I'm doing. So once the sketch was done I started working on the area around the ear and now I'm gonna do the hair. I You can go from light to dark and from dark to light when you doing a portrait or any other type of drawing but I tend to prefer going from dark to light even when I'm working in graphite because sometimes it happens to me that when I shade the face and I do the hair especially if the subject has, uh, has dark hair uh, it often happens that my face ends up looking kind of flat that's because the dark value of the hair somehow makes the lighter values, um, the more subtle values in the face, uh, less noticeable. And some of that topography of the face, which I try to render using a range of val value, a lighter range of value, kind of gets lost to the eye because of that dark, dark hair. And that's why I like to draw the hair first, and that kind of helps me gauge how much, uh, how dark the face needs to be. And here the face is going to be uh, a little bit darker because of all the shadows. Uh, but I'm still going to use the 8B pencil for most of the hair. Now, as I was drawing this hair, I initially tried working in the direction 
of the hair trying to match the length and the, trying to match the length and the direction in which the hair is combed but eventually because I just wasn't getting enough value I kind of kind of started losing patience a little bit so I just started adding um, areas of darker value by using a little bit more pressure because that's the thing about graphite if you don't use a bit more pressure you won't be able to get those darker values that's just the way it is and I know that some artists will recommend that you don't press too hard but sometimes you can't really avoid doing that one of the things that also helps with the blending graphite and also making it less reflective is using brushes especially these hard bristle brushes they kind of um, um, make the surface less less glossy and less reflective and spread the graphite very very evenly so I like using especially cropped when you crop the tip of a hard bristle brush then helps a lot with the blending especially when you're blending larger areas where you don't need quite as much precision when you need to go into some smaller areas you might want to use something like a tortillion with a fine tip or something like that now you'll notice that for the face I will be using brushes but I also be using these q-tips I find that q-tips are great blending tools when working with graphite but let me get back to what I'm doing with the hair. Uh, there's another interesting thing that I'm doing. I'm starting to introduce some lighter values here and there. Uh, before I started drawing these highlights uh, with the eraser, and there's really not much I can do because uh, graphite is a lubricant and it can be kind of difficult to remove these highlights sometimes if you pressed against the paper so it can be a little bit difficult you have to keep resharpening and cleaning up your pencil eraser and a needed eraser can often it can often be difficult to lift up the graphite because it's kind of sticking to the surface of the paper to the grain of the paper now another thing that i did before that i also worked a little bit with some lighter grades like a 6b or a 4b and even 2b to add some of those lighter, finer hairs uh, around the forehead. And here I managed finally to pull some highlights to uh, make his uh, slick back hair more realistic looking and to give it a little bit more structure and volume. I'm probably going to refine it a little bit here using an AB pencil just to put in put back in those darker areas and after that I'm just going to leave it like that because that's probably as good as I'm going to be able to make it and after some cleaning up and some final touches on the hair I'm going to move on with the shading and I'm going to start with the ear there's no particular reason other than the fact that I normally work from left to right and from top to bottom so here I'm going to change my approach a little bit I have already put in some of the darker values so now I can start working from lighter values and midtones and then I can put in some darker values in some of the shadow areas of the ear of the eyes etc so as you can see I'm going, going to be using a variety of blending tools and I'm also using our blending stump here you can use a tutelian, a blending stump, but for some of the larger areas, as you can see, I've mostly used that brush and it worked pretty well on the hair. Now, I don't know if you can tell, but because of the light source, because of the lighting in my room, the left, the, the top left part of his head is a little bit glossy, it's a little bit reflective, it's actually a bit darker in real life. So I, there's nothing I can do about that right now, but I, like I said, I hope it won't be too distracting, and I hope that you'll be able to follow along. I've moved on to drawing the eyes, <coughs> and I did the eyelash area with an 8B pencil, so I'm again starting with some 
really dark values and then and of, of course the pupil as well I'm gonna do that with an AP leaving some white space for the for the highlight in the eye and then shading the rest of the iris with a slightly lighter tone or actually a, a lot lighter tone because uh, he has blue eyes now I have to shade the rest of the eyeball using a harder pencil like you can use a H pencil or a 2H pencil for that because the entire eyeball, the entire eye needs to be shaded because it's essentially a round surface and it needs to be shaded as a round per surface so the, the corners of the eyes are going to be a little bit darker and of course there's going to be a highlight in the middle or around the middle um, depending on the light source. Moving on to the eyebrows and I'm trying to capture the shape of his eyebrows but at the same time he is uh, kind of uh, frowning a little bit here in this picture so I have to put in a bit more shadow under the eyebrows and make the eye, eye socket area especially here closer to the nose a little bit darker and of course there, there are the lower eyelashes and it's uh, kind of important to create some kind of a contrast between the in, in that transition between the lower uh, between the eyeball and the lower eyelid and to make sure that the eyelashes stand out against the eyelid otherwise the eye will just look a little bit different than it ought to so I'm shading this eye socket area uh, closer to the nose on the right and uh, putting more shadow under the eyebrows. Now all of this area looks fairly dark now, it probably looks dark enough, but the thing is that as the value of, these, uh, of this area starts to interact with the, rest of the, with the rest of the face once I shade it, it may actually appear a lot lighter than it ought to be so I may end up adding a bit more shadow in the eye socket area a bit later so as I already explained I haven't worked in graphite or in graphite only for quite some time I usually use mixed media and I mostly work in charcoal charcoal is a lot faster to work with and has some advantages over graphite but then again graphite pencils have some advantages of their own and um, because I, recently I did a graphite pencil portrait of, of a child I felt that uh, I could use that momentum since I uh, had an opportunity to practice with graphite a little bit more and shake off the rust uh, I decided to do another more challenging portrait for my channel and this was it and I'm hoping that it will turn out fine and that you'll like it um, the, the size is the usual size that I work on but like I said it's a fairly complex portrait because of the hair because of the lighting and because of the beard and the mustache and things like that so lots of detail it's going to be a very detailed portrait and I had to pick a subject uh, for my portrait uh, not that I'm a great fan of uh, this particular actor or the Hobbit but I just thought that it was a nice reference and uh, that it would make an interesting looking portrait so I hope you'll like my uh, my video and my choice of uh, subject. The entire drawing process was three and a half hours long. I compressed it into a half an hour video. Some parts of it as you can see are in real time. Let me explain briefly what I'm doing here. I'm adding some of these finer flyaway hairs, thinner hairs around the edge of the scalp so that it looks more natural so that we have some sort of a transition between those darker areas and the, and the lighter areas and I'm also adding in some of these 
uh, smaller wrinkles on the forehead. Just trying to add some add some more detail because obviously uh, the skin here is not perfectly smooth. I'm not drawing a baby or a young woman, so there's going to be a bit more texture and a few more wrinkles on his face also around the eyes here he has these uh, wrinkles uh, around the edge of the eyes and um, and on the forehead and things like that I'm going to do some more shading around it and of course I'm also going to let my pencils produce a bit of texture I don't really know if the camera will be able to see uh, to capture all of it um, all of the detail but I'm going to try to zoom in later so that you can see the texture that I've achieved on the face because the thing is that your pencils in combination with the grain of the paper they always produce some kind of a texture especially softer pencils and you should use that to your advantage because that way you don't have to work quite as hard and quite as hard to uh, create a natural looking skin all you have to do is drag your pencil across the paper and allow it to produce some texture and that way you can have a nice realistic looking skin without actually drawing every single pore and every single re uh, wrinkle so you have to let the pencil work for you as I often say so I'm still shading the larger areas of the face and trying to establish the shape of that nose which is kind of long and pointy um, so I need to capture that because that's a very important part of capturing the likeness of the person. And <clears throat> uh, here I'm shading the right side of the face. And as you can see, I'm spreading the graphite with a soft brush here. But when I work around the edges, I like to use this short bristle brush. And one of the things that you can do to preserve clean edges is you can rotate your drawing if necessary and you can point the tip of the brush towards the edge and that way you're pushing the graphite to that edge and no further and that allows you to create clean edges or preserve clean edges even when working with brushes this is very important because there are parts of your portraits where you will need a clean edge to value and um, in order to stop yourself from creating a blurry edge you need to point the tip of the brush to, to the edge and that way you won't go over it. Now you can see how clean that edge is and we can clearly see where the face ends and it's not blurry around the edges. And if necessary, if I go over it a little bit, I can always clean it up with an, with an eraser, either with a kneaded eraser or a pencil eraser even though generally I like to use kneaded erasers for cleaning up because they don't leave any residue. Uh, the eye on the, on the right has a bit more shadow so the whole eyeball as well as the reflection in the eye is going to be a little bit darker so it's very important not to make the mistake of uh, leaving those areas white but you need to go over them with a sufficient amount of value such as 2B or even a 4B where necessary because uh, all of the skin around it is going to be very dark because uh, this is clearly the shadow area of the face. Now <clears throat> As I mentioned, uh, this is going to be the shorter narrated version of this video. But if you want to see longer videos, you can check out my Patreon. And if you're interested in uh, seeing some more of my portraits, you should browse through my channel. I have lots and lots of uh, different portraits. Some of them are in graphite pencil, but most of them are either in charcoal or a combination of charcoal and a black colored pencil. One of the... I think one of the portraits I, I did in using uh, only a graphite pencil was my portrait of Patrick Swayze. 
And I did a crazy thing when I did that portrait. I wanted to draw all of it using an 8B pencil. And I think I drew about 95% of it using an 8B pencil. So that's not recommended, but it can work if you know what you're doing. Now the reason why we need different grades when we're drawing pencil portraits, graphite pencil portraits, is because obviously some of these harder pencils are a lot lighter and no matter how hard you press they won't get darker. Whereas the softer graphite pencils like a 6B, 7B, 8B, they are very dark and they will allow you to create a great, greater range of value and when you create a greater range of value you can show the volume and the shape and the depth of your main subject. And that's very important if you want to create a realistic looking drawing. Because that way your drawing won't look flat. It will appear as though it has some volume. It will appear like it's popping out of the paper. And in order to achieve that you need a range of value. In order to achieve that range of value with graphite pencils you need uh, several different grades of graphite pencils. You need, the, you need the harder ones as well as the softer ones. If you are working with a different type of a medium, like for example a black colored pencil, you would control the amount of value by controlling the amount of pressure as well as the amount of pigment you put down. So I'm moving on to the mouth here and I pulled some highlights using a pencil eraser on the nose and um, around the eyes. And the pencil eraser that I used for that is a Kohinoor pencil eraser. So I'm, here I'm using Kohinoor uh, stuff almost exclusively. I'm not sponsored by them or anything, it's just that it's, that it's easy to get in my country and it's very affordable, so I have a lot of these uh, Kohinoor drawing tools, especially graphite pencils. I've always found that they are uh, pretty cheap but at the same time of very good quality and I've used them since I was a beginner. Anyway, uh, moving on with the shading. Uh, but I decided to do a little bit of work on the mustache and the beard because sometimes I find it easier to draw the facial hair first and then do uh, the rest of the shading because that kind of helps me um, establish those uh, darker areas first and understand the shape of the face that I need to draw a little bit better. He's wearing some sort of a dark shirt. Um, I'm going to do that mostly with a combination of uh, 4B and an 8B pencil, but I'm going to simplify it a little bit because this portrait is also going to be a vignette, like most of my portraits. Most of my portraits are vignettes because I, uh, I tend to fade the lower part of the portrait towards the edges. I tend to not draw all the way to the edge of the paper because vignettes allow you for a more loose approach when drawing portraits and uh, um, they're kind of making an easier job of creating a good composition, good and balanced composition. So I'm doing a little bit more work on the beard here, trying to add some of the lighter hairs using a 4B pencil because I already put in a lot of the darker values using an 8B pencil. But here under the nose and on the lower part of the mustache I need some more of that 8B pencil. So even when you're drawing hairs on a dark-haired person, you need um, several different grades of graphite pencils because some of the thinner hairs or um, in those areas where the hair is maybe not as dense, 
or not, not as thick, uh, you will need to use a lighter pencil. But in those areas where there's a lot of volume and where the hair appears darker, you're going to need, a, need to use a softer graphite pencil. That's one of the things that I <coughs> don't like about graphite. We've lost a part of the footage, a part of the drawing process, because my, my battery ran out and I thought it was still recording that happens from time to time and during that time I, uh, I've done much of the of this left side of the face here and some of the neck, well, basically just shaded it a bit more, I guess. So I'm just uh, going to keep refining this beard a little bit by adding some of these uh, lighter grey hairs because he has those as well. So I think I started talking about uh, one of the things I don't like about graphite pencils. Um, I don't like the fact that you have to use several different grades. You have to use at least uh, four or five different pencils. And um, I don't know, I just find that a little bit annoying. It's easier for me to work with with a single pencil most of the time. I went through a phase uh, during my drawing career where I did drawings using nothing but a black colored pencil and I think that it works really well for most of the portraits. Sometimes it can be difficult for covering larger areas. But then again, uh, graphite also isn't great for covering larger areas when they're darker areas. For lighter areas, graphite is really good but when you have to cover large dark areas graphite can be can be a little bit difficult to work with and we're going to have some some of those larger dark areas here uh, on his shirt and on the lower part of the neck or part of the neck under the beard either way uh, i'm just going to have to stick to my original plan and um, finish the drawing using nothing but graphite because that's what I promised that I would do and I think that it will still turn out fine uh, but I will just have to speed up the video a little bit during this uh, more boring part of the drawing process where I'm working on the shirt and shading the lower part of the neck so you can see that here I'm shading a little bit more carelessly not using my usual a tapered stroke and cross hatching to build up the value gradually so I'm doing it a little bit more quickly now and allowing the allowing the blending tools to sort of clean up the mess and uh, make everything look a little bit better and cleaner than it initially was so I'm gonna need to shade the shirt with a sufficient amount of value leaving a little bit of texture and also adding some details like those seams and things like that but the thing is that whenever whenever I'm doing portraits especially if they're larger portraits but even with medium-sized portraits like this one I always like to go back and kind of re reassess the portrait in terms of whether I put enough value in different parts of the face. I like to step back from the portrait and to see if I've captured the likeness to a sufficient degree. And I will sometimes notice some things I don't like and I will go back and try to fix those. Like for example here I um, did a little bit of refining around the eyes and I still need to do a little bit of work around the eyes and the mouth 
as you will see near the end of the video. So those are just some of the finishing touches that can sometimes last only a minute or two but sometimes they can last even like a half an hour or an hour but ultimately it's up to you when you want to put down the pencil and when you are happy with the way your portrait looks I'm just going to keep fidgeting with mine for a little bit longer so that I can get the shape of the eyes and the nose and the mouth to look a little bit better refining some of the details and putting down some of the finishing touches but uh, like I said these are in fact just the finishing touches because the drawing is largely done so I put my signature here in the lower right part of the paper and here it is I zoomed in a little bit I hope you like it Thanks for watching, I'm going to see you in the next video, and bye for now.